Ja, de neighbors came actually to the kraakspreekuur mm -hmm. uh, in de Pretoriastraat. And they were looking for people who wanted to squat in their house block. Because they had a lot of problem with Aymere, the housing corporation. Housing, the Aymere was trying to get them out of their houses basically. And uh, what they do, did was the, the inspect procedure, which is the procedure that gives the people that live in the house block the opportunity to give their opinion about this was basically a farce. There was like, there was no real uh, possibility to give a to share your opinions. Also, they did a poll that said like 70% of the people living here were willing to leave, but this, the questions in this poll were really uh, mani manipulative. So there was a group of people really angry actually with Aymere. And later on, also they found out that. Uh, the state of the foundations was supposed to be really bad. wasn't that bad actually as, as they expected. So these really angry neighbors came to the squatting meeting and said, come on, could you please help us in our battle with Aymere by squatting a couple of houses. Uh, and then a few of us uh, agreed that we would do this. And we immediately had the idea of to start not only some places to live, but also a neighborhood center. So that we could have like a living room for the neighborhood where everybody was welcome and invited and people could develop nice ideas, workshops, films, whatever people want basically. And that's this, this is Blijvertje. So uh, right from the start we've been working very hard to make it a lively place for the neighborhood. And I think as you can see now today also there's like a lot of neighbors, people just like, living around here who come by because they've been enjoying a Blijvertje for the last four, four years. Yeah. And how they found out about the foundation, that the foundation was not so bad? Uh... We did a kind of a second opinion, so we let an independent company check the state of the foundations. The first company was a company that was paid by the Amir and gave also the results that were wanted by Amir. And we got an independent one who got, uh, yeah, we had a different uh, opinion about the state of the foundations. <laughs> And um, uh, how did the contact uh, with the neighbors uh, went uh, from the beginning? Uh, uh, you trusted them, like uh, how it was, like uh, uh, you was not afraid when you will start to squat that uh, some neighbors who would not like idea would uh, find out about it and would uh, try to stop it. Yeah, this, this always happens, of course. I mean, squatters have a certain reputation and there uh -huh. will always be some neighbors who don't like what you're doing. But uh, yeah, if you work over the years to show time and time again that you make something nice for the neighborhood where everybody can come, where everybody is welcome, or also if people don't want to come, that at least they feel uh, safe enough to come by and, uh, and for example, tell you that they think the music is too loud, something like this, then it can always, uh, yeah, at least you can show that you're reasonable people and uh, there's always a, a good way of talking to each other. And, uh, but actually we had, like, we had already quite good contact with the neighbors who asked us to come squatting. These neighbors knew their neighbors, so very soon we got to know at least the people in this, this block very well. Uh, and did a lot of neighbors know about your plans beforehand? Uh, or just a uh, small group yeah, of... Yeah, uh, small group, I think. Back then, six people. Uh -huh. yeah. And they kept it till sacred and uh, what they did uh, when uh, the action happened? They were, uh, they were helping, helping uh, you with uh, explaining to other neighbors? Uh, well, yeah, they were handing out neighborhood letters, uh -huh. explaining other neighbors and uh, making coffee and tea and... Uh, yeah. Was the other neighbors not angry with them that they kept it uh, from uh, them in secret? Well, the, the people in this house block, everybody knew about it. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, it was mo mostly the neighbors on the other side of the street that didn't mm -hmm. know about it. And I guess nobody was really angry, no. No. What, uh, would you like to give some advice in this sort of like uh, what uh, you have to be aware about, like what you have to pay more attention uh, with this sort of like uh, actions when you go into some neighborhood struggle uh, and... Uh well, you have to realize it's a lot of work because uh -huh. it inv involves all kinds of things like uh, political action, a neighborhood center that you're running means that you're going to have to be there, you have to clean the place, uh, make it nice. Uh, so. Yeah, you have to realize it's a lot of work, I guess. Um, and what is really important is that you have a good contact with your neighbors so that you don't fuck up this contact in the process somehow by not doing what you promised or causing annoyance or whatever. So, yeah. And work together and work and form a team and stay, uh, 
really move as a team, work as a team. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you uh, succeed uh, with this creating the neighborhood center. Also, that even anti squatters uh, was uh, uh, yeah. coming here, and uh, yeah, they were. Uh, Having a beer, yeah, uh, yeah, came by. Yeah. Okay. yeah, this is this. What I said, we really try to create an atmosphere where everybody feels welcome, and it really everybody. I mean, it, of course, we don't agree in anti-squatting, but uh, I'm not going to make that personal with somebody who's living here and who's ignorant. Actually, it's a very good way for me also to explain to this person what is actually the problem with anti-squatting. Did they understood uh, some of them? Uh, yeah, did actually, they the, their minds. Uh, yeah, in, in the block behind here, which was also part of the same project as this block, uh, actually one anti-squatter turned into a squatter. Okay. And, uh, How it happened? It happened that uh, a lot of his house, uh, he was living in a house, and all the floors were empty except for where he was living. And uh, he said it was ridiculous, and uh, so he let the squatters in. And he said, "Okay, here, guys, uh, I've got some keys from some, some doors from neighbors that I knew, and so on." And obviously, Amira found out and was like, what the fuck are you for kind of anti-squatter letting the squatters in? So then they uh, kicked him, him out of the anti-squatting thing and then he said, well, for me it doesn't matter because now I'm squatting. <laughs> <laughs> fuck this. <Yeah. laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was one. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, what uh, would you like to say about today? Like, uh, what is the situation now uh, of Blyverche, how it came to that moment? And, uh, yeah, we really done everything we could for all those years to make sure that, first of all, the people with a normal rental contract here get, yeah. got what they deserve. And second of all, that we make a lively neighborhood center. And we really tried everything. We have a, yeah, another court case tomorrow, but if we lose that court case, then it's definite that we're going to be evicted. And what we want to do now is show one last time to the neighborhood uh, our appreciation for the nice corporation that we had all for all those years. Give, uh, give the neighborhood one last party uh, and as well go around the neighborhood and show all these places where we think we have done very important stuff and explain or let neighbors explain actually uh, why what we did there was important so we we don't talk mostly ourselves we have the neighbors explaining for us why it was good what we were doing there uh, we try to make the statement and then we move as, a, as one to the Valrape, which is a new social squatted center that we, that we have. So, uh, so uh, which places uh, we would pass by? Like which places? Uh, uh, we're going, as I've understood, to the Plantanenlaan, where people are still struggling, basically. And then we go here behind to the Vrolijkstraat, where houses have been demolished with the promise we will start building right away. Place is still empty. And we left voluntarily there because they said they would start building immediately, which I mean didn't do. Then we're coming back here, I guess. Then we're going to another place in the Vrolijkstraat where Elaine is going to. You're going to make a speech there, no? Yeah, yeah. It's one of our neighbors that is going to make a speech. Uh, and then uh, Linnaeusstraat and uh, and up to Valrape.